7.01 on Thursday, October 26. Uh, I just updated the agenda because I didn't update agenda. Update that. Because we're only two weeks. Uh, yes, because I, I, I'll, I'll, I, I'll talk about that. Yes, we're, we're, it's, it's online. Now, where was I before? You, I, I didn't get enough sleep last night, so I'm a little scattered. Yes. Uh, Tuesday, October 26, it is 7.02. This is the meeting of Thursday. Thank you. Like I said, uh, meeting of the Menden Conservation Commission. My name is Carl Hummel. I'm the chair. We'll now introduce the rest of the commissioners. Bob Sweet. Leah Whiting. I command the lift. Uh, there are four of us out of seven that Jason. constitutes a quorum. Oh, good. Uh, and Jason, our selectman rep, showed up. Uh, Jason, Hello. do you need to get anything set up before I start conducting business? Nope, everything is all set to go. Thank you. Jason, are you able to hear us? Yes, are you able to hear me? Well, we're not hearing you. This he could be on mute. She's on mute. No, his his circle's lighting up. Jason, so I can the hear you. The microphone had a slash to it. Yeah. Oh, you can you can hear me, Kyle. So I can, the issue I can hear is you. on so their it must end. Be on their end. Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay. <laughs> this happened last meeting. OK, try talking now. Maybe I yeah, set the speaker. Good. Yes, I, I, I figured I'll, I'll have to thank Lonnie. The option settings has in parentheses use this for the one that it's supposed to be set to. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so you're all set to go, by the way. And uh, I don't have anything that you need to do. And hopefully Thanks. it'll be a great quick meeting. So can you say what it is that you're setting up? You said something about AI. Uh, we're just you were using the transcription feature inside of teams to um, see if we can process that a little faster uh, into meeting notes. Um, so we're we're, okay. we're giving that a shot, seeing how it's going. We're hopping yeah, into just, a few meetings and testing it out. Yeah, that popped up. I just turned it off because it's so distracting. OK, uh, all right, so I will start working my way through. Uh, we have no public hearing scheduled tonight, uh, so we can just zip our way through the agenda. Uh, so um, start with reviewing status of hiring a new admin agent. We've actually made progress on this and why I'm bringing this up first. Uh, starting Monday, we Menden has retained someone who will be going and creating minutes for us by reviewing the YouTube videos. Uh, we've set up uh, the workspace in the CONCOM office across the parking lot, and someone is supposed to be coming in Monday at 10 o'clock, and we'll see how successful they are at transcribing our um, minutes. OK, Peter's, Peter Coffin is now joining us. We're having someone start Monday specifically for uh, writing old minutes and generating the old minutes. So at our next meeting with luck, we will have a large handful of minutes to review and then approve and get put in the public record. Uh, second is we had a successful interview today uh, with a candidate. She is uh, qualified to do some of the agenting work as well. Uh, and she is now going to be going through the uh, background check process. The town administrator, David, is going to talk to the police chief and see what we can get done sooner than later and if we can get her approved at the Board of Selectmen meeting next Wednesday, uh, whether they can get that done in time. Does she live nearby? Uh, yes. Uh, so that that wouldn't be an issue. And I did the usual description of working at certain hours uh, on a fixed time a week. Uh, uh, she's uh, out of college and looking with a background in environmental science. Uh, her, 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 her particular interest is uh, 
wetland uh, uh, water quality and algae blooms and she had one of her she next to me <laughs> well she'll be sitting over there one of one of one of the things that she did on one of her intern projects was on another lake go and take water samples and i said oh dan Breyer will be really happy to talk to you about about you know water quality and monitoring so how many hours do we have for that position uh up to 18. oh that's good and that that's basically uh the uh, i am staying out of the negotiation process it's a question of how many um uh, what hourly rate they determine based on her experience and the yeah. prevailing wages that's HR. exactly that's why i'm saying they'll that's come HR. back and, and the way i phrase it, it you know i point at david he's your boss there's your hr person they will assign you to work with me and i'll give you a, a tasks and assignments and so they will determine how many hours she's working and what the rate is she's an agent not a clerk she will be doing the clerking and she is she is going to start working on agent activities oh, uh she is the uh primarily doing research on EPA regulations, Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Mendenhown bylaws, and being able to give us advice on when engineers come in with their plans and discussing about whether they are in compliance with those three things. Uh, she's also would be going with us on site walks and, and taking notes. She's not, uh, whether she, goes and gets is interested in getting training on flagging wetlands and doing other activities like that. That's something we would discuss with her in the future. I, I appreciate it. Yes, the, the selectmen hire that position and I guess the administrative assistant is the boss, but I'm not sure of that term boss. I would want you to keep control or we to keep control of the scope of her work and if the question is she doing agent stuff or clerical stuff it's up to us to ask yes. what to yes her the, do. what happens is they would a, the, the the town admin assigns her to work for us for a certain number of hours and then we are responsible me primarily to say here are the tasks you need to work on okay. and and especially if she's not going to have to be worrying about our backlog of minutes she'll be able to deal with the filing prep for meetings We've we've it's been years since we've been able to come into a meeting and there's a binder with everything in it oh, that we absolutely. need to review. So I'm I'm so, definitely looking again, forward I, to that. I agree with Peter 100 percent, but I also think that we, we give it some some time. Yeah, what we're going to yeah. what we're going to discover is that we're going to need more than 18 hours. Yes. But for now, it's a good start. Yes. Again, she might say, you know what? Uh, I can't do this. I'm leaving or whatever. But I think that's a good start. Yes. Um, Peter is absolutely right. Yes. The, the, the problem is that Menden, we, um, Bob and I are attending the MACC classes and there are people from towns larger than us that have not just one, but two or three people working on conservation and wetland issues, especially coastal communities. Menden can't afford to pay someone 60,000 a year. And so what will typically happen is we will hire someone, train them, and then they'll go work for Concord or Framingham or another larger place. Uh, but we'll just have to, un until we're able to uh, develop the, the resources in town, that's just our lot. Year by year, it'll be a discussion right. of yeah. head of the finance committee as to yes. mm -hmm. what we think is needed. Hopefully we can grow or that person can show yep. that they're Right. Um, as we all know, conservation is becoming a, a bigger and bigger issue as the years come. As yep. it should. And PFAS, sure. PFAS is the next thing that's going to be hitting us and uh, uh, and other water quality issues and stormwater. I mean, it's almost November. I'm in short sleeves today. <laughs> Don't worry. You're fine. <laughs> and like I said, we I can foresee the future needing more more hours yes yep at the moment just a, the town is in a pretty good financial mm -hmm. position with seven hundred thousand dollars of free cash uh, oh okay. uh, put it in the rainy day fund with at the special Don't town put it in our coppers <laughs> yeah but it seems like we're getting in 
drawn into a lot of neighbor issues. It's not the traditional notice of intent, right? right. But it's work being done within a buffer. It's existing house, whatever it is. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, the, the training that I've been attending and, and Bob as well, and also all the slides I've been saving away in terms of enforcement, uh, I, there is a lot of activity that a agent can do. Uh, Bill sort of did it, but he was he he did some agent tasks. If we ever get someone who is a fully designated agent, they are able to do a lot of the monitoring and begin the enforcement process and then bring it to our attention if the response isn't good. So that that would take a lot of the day to day monitoring of the email off so that I'd be able to work with people on land use and uh, on, on some of the more the broader conservation restriction and and other protection functions. So I'm I'm hoping this works out. All right. Um, next item, uh, item three. I corresponded with Greg Lambert and his uh, Kendra from who's his elect who's his site engineer, and they corrected me. No, we're we're at some point in the future they will come back to us, they will submit the paperwork and send out green cards for another hearing. Until that time, we're waiting for them to uh, begin that process. Hearing for? Uh, this is the stone wall on Lake Nipmuc for 10 Old Taft. So he's going to file a violation? We've already done that. That's what Peter sent out a couple uh, over the summer. Uh, right, uh, yeah, but technically, I thought, we are supposed to make a vote as to whether he could have done that work. And then after we make that vote, then he does. I have no problem jumping over that. Yeah, this this that, this one yeah, I'm looking at is I'm looking at grandfathering this one because the process fell through the cracks and I'm now taking a much closer look at building permits and people on the lake are now coming to us immediately if they see work beginning. Can I just yep. The only thing I would worry about with this is that everyone on that lake is aware of this. And so are we opening a can of worms grandfathering this in? Are well, we the, the grandfathering is only that we're not yelling at him and telling him he has to remove the wall and then come back to us and ask to put him well, in again. I, right. I, we're giving him I, a I second chance. I personally think the word is out now. Yes. This was, <laughs> I don't believe in uh, crucifying anyone and conservation shouldn't be dealt with the club. The guy made a mistake. He certainly was coming here yep. time and time again and trying to work with us, et cetera, et cetera. So as as but I do believe that that this particular scenario was a wake up call for a lot of people, especially the people on the lake. Mm -hmm. So again I'm not to crucify him. Yep. What I'm sure the guy is embarrassed now. What did he do to work with us? Well, we haven't gotten a, a, a yeah, we he, 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 he came he came to our meetings and he he is now working with a reputable engineering firm to yeah. begin the wetlands paperwork process. They are going to amend their existing uh, they are going to come to us asking for an amendment to their existing order of conditions. They will send out green cards and we will reopen the public hearing for that and then determine what modifications, if any, we want to make. Uh, at that time, we'll either accept an as built and, and say it's OK, or we will have a discussion if we want him to modify the existing structure. And that will be done at a public hearing after after the abutters have been notified. Okay. Um, what I'm expecting is that over the next couple of months, the Lake Nipmuc Association Task Force and you will be coming up with, here's how much, here's what you can do in your beachfront area uh, without anything more than notifying the clerk, here are the things you need to come to a meeting to do, and here are the things you're not allowed to do. And I expect there'll be something like, you can put this much sand in, but not that much sand. And that's that's what I would be looking for guidance from you. If our new clerk agent is interested in researching that and working with you, that would also be happening. We should de define the law. Yes. This was allowed. That's not allowed. Not our opinion. 
right. or someone else's. And, right. and, and, and specifically. What, what, well, it's. I'm all for that. That way there, it's fair and equitable to. Uh, well, we have our bylaws too. Yes, and and the, this is my my experience from decades working in, in in regulatory for financial regulation. But there's a major difference between the regulations and how they end up being applied. In part because making regulations is like making sausage. There are a lot of the reason why the 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 mass Wetlands Protection Act is so fuzzy wuzzy and the why they never really specifically come out and say things is because when the law and the regulations are being created in DEP, there's a lot of competing interests that all get together and start jostling. So they want to leave it open for interpretation so that on a case by case basis, people can argue their particular way. And that's exactly why <clears throat> there's a seven member board. Yes. Usually with a diverse background in each one so that it's it's not all uh, one sided. Yeah, my my hope is that we are able to. In addition to we, we, we have the Menden bylaw for wetlands. I'm hoping that we come up with a FAQ file or a you know, checklist saying here is the way that the Menden ComCom will typically make a determination. I I have been doing this in emails. Mm -hmm. where What's going on? Oh, is that someone I'm who joined? I muted whoever that was. Yeah. I think okay. Was, that was, was that Deshang joining? Oh, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Deshang, there's a whole lot of feedback coming from you. you did some, could you type something into chat so we could see that? So, um, uh, yeah. That's that's my expectation that we were able to come up with, as I was saying, when people ask what logging am I allowed to do in a wetlands? I'm saying here are the typical conditions that we we grant. Come talk to us if you need further information. And I'm hoping to get the same similar kind of approach codified for anything that people want to do in their their beachfront property. That's a great idea. If you can hit bullet points. Yes. For different activities. It's a great idea. Yep. OK. Um, so I see DeShang is on and he would be here to talk about item number five, uh, Sylvan Spring Monitoring. DeShang, are you able to talk off mute without having a whole lot of feedback? Sorry. Nope, we're just hearing a loud humming noise. I'll Modern technology, I'll, isn't it a wonderful thing? Yep, I'll I'll move on uh, and see if we can we we can get uh, get back to that. So, um, late Nipmuc task force. So we'll continue talking about the lake. The first one is um, the lake water level. We received photos from Billy Palmer of Abe Kinsley Lane reporting that he had high he was seeing high water on late Nipmuc. Let me bring those up. Just a shank, so yeah, the south is a no, no, he's he's now we're now. you're off mute, but we're not hearing you, Deshang. So you're we're not seeing any input from you into the team's meeting, so it's something on your end. You're like sitting in front of the computer pad. He's trying, he said. Yep. So going back to eight Kinsley Lane. Yeah. Uh, he sent in two photos along with his email. And he is saying that that is a much higher level of water than he usually sees. So I asked Bob to reach out to other people on the lake. Bob, can you give an update on what you heard? It's right. talk, talking to the mic. I, I reached out to some of the other lake members and um, they 
two different uh, individuals said that they didn't see a change in the height of the lake. Um, so they are unclear of where that information could be coming from. The information being the lake is the lake higher than usual. And by the look of that stone wall, it looks like the water is either splashing against it or it's lower than what the wall shows as being wet. Well, the wall, look at that picture. The water's a long ways away from that wall. Right. But look at the bottom of the wall. It's, it's you're saying it's wet. Yeah. And right. the it's lake had come up or could that have just been runoff, heavy runoff from the street? On its way to the lake, so is that like that is that's like a, a foot higher. If that flooded out, that that's uh, and it doesn't rise and fall that quick. <laughs> We've had some rain, but not. I I don't know. So we had one person complaining, and then we had these pictures. These are the pictures he sent in. So there's no comparison picture though of of when it would have been lower. No. So, so since we are not hearing a report from other other people on the lake having similar issues, my my recommendation is that we take no action on trapping at this time. So, uh, is there any evidence of of Beaver, and Beaver Dam at the outlet? No. Okay. Other but than you've seen the evidence when you've gone to Beaver Dams, you've been on the lake, right? I went around the lake, but I didn't see any evidence of beaver dams. But, but is the wasn't dam the down back. below the ramping to the, 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 down, the, down, the down. outfall? Yes. Uh, Alan Tetralt trapped a number of beavers a couple of months ago. He did not get the adults. He did get a bunch of juveniles, and they broke the dam. So it may be the case that the dam will get rebuilt, and the water will be coming up, and we'll just continue to monitor that. I think uh, we should try to uh, think about. Uh, putting a monitoring pole in. Right. The high, low, and medium water level. Well, just like a, a staff gauge or something? Right. To see something, the, what, something, something with, read the level? Custom with uh, uh, numbers on it. Is that something so we can do by the town beach? Like town beach. Yeah, it could be. But it's got to be done so that uh, we know the pole's not moving. Yeah, it's got to be semi-permanent installation. <laughs> Which is okay. a to do with some right. so, uh, I five-gallon bucket of cement buried in the sand. Bob, we have any place where there's an abutment on the lake? Because that's the easiest. Yeah, well, just... Bob, can I uh, dump this on you and ask you to work with Dan Beyer on seeing whether the town can come up with money to create this kind of a uh, yardstick water in level the water? Gauge. Yeah. Yeah staff gauge and then if he, he would be able to advise uh if there's a good location in the town uh the town beach area that it could not interfere with recreational use right and easy to observe yeah you don't want to have to pack a lunch to go check the gauge Get well the gauge. It, it, just use a pair of binoculars if you binoculars. Need to. Sure. okay we have it in the budget we have a lot of money that we don't spend because uh, we're, frugal. We're, we're frugal and we've been returning our our general funds, although we are going to hit. That's why we have seven hundred thousand dollars. Yes, cash. we are going to be hitting up our training budget and we'll right. talk about that later. So let me so, so the so uh, on the act on, on the issue of uh, beaver tracking, we will take no action. Instead, we will ask Bob to. Uh, reach out yeah, about should, a monitoring station. Mm -hmm. Not a priority, but something that we I've should definitely asking. work towards. I've been asking about that for the last three months is what is the high, median, and low water levels of the lake? Right. If we get one in there, and even if we record it once a week, time goes by, all of a sudden we'll have a year two years, three years of right. well, back data, data to go and say, hey, you know, the average height is between, it's like this, that goes above that, you know, we got a big problem. And you can also, um, you can check it with the rain, uh, the rain levels of right. every month. And it may just be high because we've had like 60 inches of rain since June, you know. 
soon. Okay. Uh, Deshang is logged out and trying again, so we'll go on to the next lake issue. Uh, item number eight, frag mites in Meadowbrook Woods. This isn't Lake Nipmuc, but it's another body of water. Um, the current recommendation uh, we got email from and is uh, water and wetlands are uh, the company that comes in and treats water, the lake and other areas for us does not want to take any action at this time. They will instead, uh, the patch is small enough that we will do this next fall uh, and they will start the paperwork like in August or September. That involves a notice of intent, sending out green cards to people. Uh, their proposed treatment is taking some kind of herbicide and lightly brushing the tops of the little tendrils of the plants. Uh, Leah, do you want to say more about that? Um, it's better if they cut them and then drip it in because it's not airborne at that point. Okay. But I think that um, the, the chemical that they use will be systemic, but I would like them to use a specific family of chemicals, nothing um, that's carcinogenic or anything like that. So. And, and when we start doing the NOI paperwork, you can talk to the, 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 well, the water think, and wetlands uh, people. I hate to use this cliche. Do you think we should nip it in the bud? <laughs> They're going to go dormant very soon, so there might not be enough time to treat them. Yeah, the, 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 the advice we got back from water and wetlands is they would need to do it in the month of October, which is almost done, and we did not have enough time to do the paperwork, and the patch is small enough that emergency action was not necessary. And so is that a next fall thing? We will be, we, we expect the next. How long would it take to get the paperwork done? It's just, how fast can they mobilize to do it? Um, Any of that information available? It, they, they need and, to. In, in, in a year's time, it could triple in growth. What's your experience with it? It's an invasive plant, so they grow pretty fast. It could take over, and all of a sudden we've got a ten dollar item that's turning into a thousand dollar item. In in order to treat that body of water, the the company wants a order of conditions, which requires a notice of intent, sending out green cards, scheduling a public hearing, which usually would take at least two weeks from when we discussed this, and they felt that the patch was small enough. We can wait until next year. Uh, we can, they will be coming to us in the spring when we negotiate the summer treatment. We can bring that up at the time and see if they want to, if, if the patch is growing like an invasive weed and see if they need to do anything about it sooner. Can, can someone go out there and take a picture of it so we have something to uh, um, we can I look at and say, gee, I thought it was. Right now, it's, yeah, I would expect so. Ian was trying to explain to me where it was, but I wasn't following her drift. Okay, Leah, can you try following up with Anne to see if she can get us a, a map locus and a picture of what it looks like now? Then, like May in, in, in July, we can look and see if it's doubling in size or whether it's going to be small enough. But that, like with anything, it could be a big issue. So hopefully it won't turn into a big issue, but why don't we stop reacting and be proactive and and I think what Kyle's saying is, is with all the paperwork, it's the timing. Um, the well, paperwork is what's jamming us up, not the not the. It's, I'm, not, it's, I'm, I'm not criticizing anybody or be trying to be argumentative, but really, how long would it take us to whip out a notice of intent, send out the the mail? Two weeks. And mail. weeks. Two but weeks. Two weeks. If we get a so permit. that's the second week of. of November, and that, but it needs to be done. Enough. And they said it was that would be too late. Right, because we're going to have frost. The plane is going to go dormant and putting chemicals on a dormant plane. What day are we have frost? Uh, Monday. It's going to get cold next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's going it to get is. cold. I already looked at the. Yeah. I'll let you know. All right. All right. Can, I'll call can. you when I get up in the morning at three thirty. Okay. Hello. I'm into my truck. Good. Can frost, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, thank you. Well, finally, uh, I don't know those computer stuff. Hi, Mike. It's uh, low. So we, we have many new new uh, people, oh. new faces. <laughs> yep. OK, we can now move on to agenda item number five, Silver Sylvan Spring Monitoring. Discuss site walk last Friday, October 20th. Take any action required. 
Uh, last Monday, a number of us, uh, Susan, myself, Bob, and Leah, met with uh, Desheng. What was the name of the person we met with? Uh, Francis. We met with Francis, and he went and showed us uh, a number of the uh, areas of concern on the, on the site. Uh, we received earlier today, or yesterday, yes. the, the reports that I've put in the agenda folder. What I did is I went through and looked at the, the previous report and the latest report, and a lot of the open, uh, uh, for each of the areas of concerns, uh, there was, for some of the areas, a corrective action was either uh, mandated or recommended. A uh, number of them have been closed, and I put that in the report close date. There are a couple that were opened up as well. So I'll now uh, let Desheng talk further on uh, how the process is working. All right. Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, Desheng from Creative Land and Water Engineering. <laughs> I see. Is that uh, uh, Peter too? Yes. Yes. Oh, Desheng. Peter. Good okay. <laughs> the distance. I can. I can see Mike because his face is bigger. So. <laughs> okay. I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, I think so. <laughs> uh, Okay, uh, so so uh, Carl, Susan, and uh, and uh, what the, another new member? I think yeah, Hedge, Bob. Bob, Bob. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay, uh, just to get familiar. So have been doing this project since two thousand four. I think Mike and uh, Peter were still on at that time. So it's it's almost twenty years. I can't believe you know we all have gr grow gray now. Uh, I, if I so, Carl, if I can, I can share with you like in the overall project site plan. Probably the easiest yes, to discuss. Uh, okay, see how I I use Zoom all the time. I I don't use uh, that uh, Microsoft Team that much. That's why the computer doesn't even how to handle it. So when I have too many things open, they don't let me use it. Okay, good. Yeah, I can see better. Let's see how I share my screen. Uh, here, okay. Uh, screen, share windows. Ah, okay, find it. Yep, we got it. Okay, so you can see that's good. That's good. We, uh, so it's like a, a little rush because I haven't really uh, get any overlay the, the subdivision plan was uh, uh, so there was two stages earlier we we own we don't have the silver miscal spring uh, plan available so after that they purchased it so the subdivision reflect you can see the gray uh, shaded down was the original approval and then when this uh, locust hill Dry was added, so we did a, a amendment or a full amendment to uh, for the stormwater for everything. Uh, probably around 2015, 2016, if I remember right. If this plan, yeah, 2015. So this is just like an index plan, but all others will kind of break down. It's difficult to see the whole site. So the if I understand, you met Francis probably roughly. Here around the Locust Hill up, right? Some somewhere around the lot 62 area started. So let me give so Mike and uh, Peter, you have to bear with me. Let me you if you just to in case the people is not familiar, so especially for uh, Carl and Susan. So the whole site uh, has uh, uh, a stormwater basins. Uh, uh, Lost you there, Deshang. Froze up. We actually uh, met him up at the, the top area here. Walked down along here, and then we down here. This is where they they have the big excavator mm -hmm. working on the swale coming down that way.
Well, well, was there active erosion or were there major issues? There were. There were no major issues. There were a number of uh, areas of concerns. There was one major erosion or moderate erosion channel on one of the, the new roads that uh, is actually now listed as an act as an open item as of the latest report. Um, and a number of the. The other ones have been uh, taken care of. If you go, well, they, they, they were addressing it. Yes, uh, I, I so so my 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 asking them why do you still have issues open since uh, since February has has been uh, noted and they are starting to work on updating their documentation. So the this is the report that we got. It's now on the SharePoint site. They have photos down here uh, with uh, evidence of either remediation. Uh, some of the items that were were listed was uh, they needed to do hydro seeding and uh, make sure the lawn was in. Some of the photos that they have sh uh, show show the lawn uh, now coming in. Um, Thanks to the seventy degrees. <laughs> well, 70, it, it got it got a nice a, a nice thing going today. Yes. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, my my expectation when Deshang gets back, he'll finish his report, and that we will schedule uh, another site walk in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, uh, when when they when they feel comfortable. Uh, this is a new report. This is the report as a. This is the report based on the site walk we did last Friday, that from so from October twentieth. Oh, well, that's good. Do, do they do reports monthly or quarterly? Bi-weekly. They they go out every two weeks. But they don't send us reports every two weeks. Do well, they? they are now. Uh, okay. What happened is they got out of the habit uh, two years ago because no we weren't talking to them about it. And I, I said, hey, I remember seeing these and you know, I, I can hear the, the blasting. So I said, can you uh, send me the latest reports? And that's where I noticed uh, you haven't. There's some of the things you asked about haven't been taken care of lately. So we'll see how how that. Uh, I'm I'm expecting that they I I I made in effect uh, my own issue tracker. I'm expecting that they'll have something similar in their their on-site trailer where they keep track of these things, and we just need to to integrate. And uh, at our next site walk, we'll start at the trailer. Deshang or, or Francis will pull up that form and then we'll say, here's this area of concern, here's what's going on. And then when we go out and actually see the sites, we'll we'll be able to, to see what's going on. Uh, part of the reason why we haven't looked at it in two, in, in two years is because Deshang and his company are very good at doing the monitoring and working with the, the, the contractor developer to make sure there are no uh, wetlands violations. How long is an order of conditions good for? Three years, or but if you're active, do they need an extension? I don't know. Is yeah, three years. We, maybe three we, years. I gotta. We we we. Ask them. Their DEP number. We we extend. We extended their OOC. Basically, we've rubber stamped them twice now since I've been on the board. Really. Okay. So they are coming in when when they're supposed to. Confusing to me was how they were flagging things. I wasn't sure like there were different color flags. Right, and and, and when if the shag is able to come back, we could ask him for that and and well, get what was that question. They had a lot of flagging, but there were different color flags. So it was a little confusing to see where they were mapping things out and what they were. I weren't mapping sure whether for. some were property lines, some were wetland lines. Um, what they had multiple flags together. Um, so we're just looking for clarification on. What the flags mean, and and so on. Yeah, they were different colors too. So, okay. Well, if I, 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 Deshang is is not yet back yet. I see that um, Kyle is here to talk about agenda item ten, conservation restriction activity. We have scheduled a site walk uh, for this coming Sunday at nine a.m. I reached out to. Uh, Mr. Magoon, Magoonan, Magoonan, Minushian, yeah, and uh, he will be there uh, for us. Uh, I'm, I'm 
we're meeting on Sunday morning because it's hunting season and he would prefer not to do that on a Saturday. Uh, what I printed out is a copy of the monitoring report that made a comment prepared for us. Uh, Mr. Magoo. Mr. Mnuchin remembered Susan and made a comment going out over the summer, but he did not have a copy of this report. He doesn't have any online presence. Uh, so is there someone on the committee who would be able to drop by and drop this off with him? Otherwise, we can bring it uh, on Sunday when we go to visit. I asked him, you know, do you want a copy? He said, whatever. But it, it might be helpful if, if uh, he were able to get a copy of this and review it. Uh, again, that is what this is the conservation is restriction monitoring report with that that uh, Medicomet did for us for 43 Quincet Road, the, the old Pearson farm. Just recently, did that get done recently or in the past two months? Has anybody looked into the original deal that was made when he purchased Well, that the was farm? the document that I would want to see. Right. Is the original baseline report that was done in 2005. When the deal was made. Right. Yes. And it there was. it should be clear where the stone walls were. And because yeah. it, Medicom has been doing a great job of current conditions, but we're getting down to interpreting. We got to go back to the original and that That's where drives we it. Start. From the very beginning. Doesn't seem like he knows. Doesn't seem like right. it's a uh, slice of fun. So it's up to <laughs> us to review it with him. And well, we got okay. it. Yep. What what uh, I've been corresponding with uh, with Medicom with Mike is Medicom. It has a Google Drive, which should be coming up. And uh, I will be. I, I'm basically working with them to get a copy of their Google Drive onto our SharePoint Drive, at which point it becomes a public record sure. and is available to, to us and the public. Because uh, I hate to think, I guess all our records are in those cabinets by street number or if order conditions. And also if you go to... The problem with not having a clerk. Is anyone from Metacomet planning on attending the site walk? I sent, I copied them all on the invitation and yes. I'm hoping they will. Um, Does Ann Mazad get an invitation? She was instrumental in this, that whole deal. I can check whether she was on the email or not. That, that's what I mean. We got to go back to the very beginning yep. and go over it and go, oh, look at this. You know, I mean, you can't. Then there's no saying I didn't know, or he can say I didn't know. Well, okay, we're reviewing it now. You do know. Yeah, there are there are some online files involved. Uh, so I'm expecting that after we go out and uh, to conduct the site visit, we'll we'll determine whether we need to do further uh, investigation of the existing CR and the agreement well, between the town. Again, I don't want to uh, beat this to death, but whoever goes out there, I can't make it. I'm gone. Yep. Uh, for the weekend. Should be should know what the original deal was. Yep. Instead of I think it was this, I thought it was that. Someone's wouldn't opinion wouldn't this would be what it was. Deep. This what you have in your hand now is the report that Medicomet prepared for us over the summer. Right, but it was recorded on the, on, uh, in 2015. Yes. Was it recorded here on his deed? Um, would conservation have... restrictions would be attached to the deed. Right, so you could pull up his deed in 2015 yes. and get this. Yep. That one, that did, was that the year the deal was made? Yes, it says right here. Uh, so here, yeah, conservation I mean, restriction so recorded. Yeah. 316 okay. 2015. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Okay. So, Kyle, are you there? I see. How's it going, Carl? You just took yourself off mute. Were you able to follow what I was saying about the Sunday visit? 
Sorry, I'm I'm at ninety Park Street. I called in. Oh. Yeah, I, it's, I didn't see it on the agenda, but I'd called in last meeting about closing out the order of uh, conditions, and I had sent over the the I think the uh, plan and the uh, permit information um, after that meeting, and then I think we had talked about me calling into this meeting for any follow up. Okay. So is this a single family house you did or what? what it is. It? Yep. Single family home. We just finished up all of the uh, site work and landscaping and things, things of that nature. So we're moved in. Um, everything's established. Um, and then I had just closed out a permit for a detached garage. And I was just going through my, my paperwork and realized that the order of conditions had never been uh you know closed out so um i had called in last last meeting okay susan is not able to be here tonight because uh her company is running an event that she's helping to host uh, so i believe the next step would be for people to go out to the property and make sure that uh, the, the order of conditions has been fulfilled can we see all the work from the street? Yep. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's on Park Street, so it's uh, almost right when you get to to Henry Street in Uxbridge on the left. Almost out of town, huh? Almost out of town. Yeah. Luckily, just just made it in though. Yeah. Is that the big giant house that they just built? Uh, we we built it back in 2018. There's been a couple of new houses on the road, I think, since ours. Were there, were there any issues with this lot? No, no, we bought it from somebody who had done all the paperwork on it. Um, and then um, Mike Tatro did the septic and all that. So uh, we had finished that all up. And then we had put the foundation in for the detached barn. We moved in in 2018. Um, and then pull the permit just to frame the detached barn um, a couple of years later. Just I wanted to get the foundation and get all the site work finished up so we could we didn't have to open up the ground again and do all that. So, um, so yeah, no no issues. So the wetlands are off your property, but they're pretty close to your garage. There, it looks like around. Correct. 50 feet. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well. Uh, if it's waited this long, can it wait another two weeks? That's fine. Yeah, I just, again, I, I didn't know if there was any other follow-up needed from, from me. Well, there was. <laughs> there was a good follow-up. We'll, we'll get on it, though, and that shouldn't okay. be a problem. All right, great. So in the next two weeks, uh, people will go out and take a look at the site, and we should be able to generate the certificate of compliance for our next meeting and get it signed. Okay, great. He got a notice of intent. So we'll talk to Susan. And if we have a new clerk, then Susan can work with the new clerk on generating the paperwork <laughs> as a training exercise. Hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, good night. Good night. I don't yeah, you're yeah. Okay, um, agenda item. Number nine, FEMA flood map updates. Leah, you took the training. You want to give us a I your did. summary? They mostly focused on the Charles River watershed uh, for most of the meeting. I sent in the maps and the slides that they have. There we go. So the the, the part of Menden, which is in the Charles River watershed, is this section way up here. Yeah. And so could you give some background on what the what's going on and why we're the town is going to get involved in doing something? They're updating a model bylaw or something. OK, so I'm new at this. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you're our expert. Um, there was a lot of maps. There were a lot of slides. Um, there were very technical terms on the flood map updates. So, but what I did do was there's a, a meeting that they recorded. They recorded the session. 
So, um, and I've sent that to all of us. Did everyone get my email? Yes. Okay. So you guys can kind of take a look at it and see. My only experience with the floodplain is further south in Menden. What's that? Almost in Blackstone. Remember we had that issue. There was a uh, keep going south. Where the Mill River crosses here, oh, yeah. there was this new subdivision yeah. in here. This crossing, well, this is floodplain. And there was work done in the floodplain storage. I forget what it was. So that's my only experience with, because that was Army Corps, right? So that's, what's, what's the main street there? Well, that's Providence Street. No, this this one with the subdivision. Colonial That's, Colonial. That's the one where they're going to put up a sign at the beginning of the subdivision when they go and do a utility work over the summer. That's a big old wetland there. It's a it's a middle room. It's, yeah. So they they mostly folk didn't focus on anything near us is what I'm saying. Even though that is in the Charles River watershed, um, but they were mostly up. I want to say they kept looking at a map near some up near Lincoln, so it wasn't. I mean, for me, I, I don't know those areas, or I don't know yet enough about floodplains. And I don't think anyone in Mended has floodplain insurance. We're up high. We're not subject to yeah. flooding. Uh, what what I'm expecting, Dylan uh, from the planning yeah. board yeah. is also involved in this, and and they would be the person on the Mended staff, town staff, who would be taking the lead and saying whether. Uh, the planning board, board of health, CONCOM need to update and come up with a specific by local bylaw to be in accordance with whatever the uh, the federal regulations are are getting updated to. Yeah, because in some people. towns it's like big. It's very political. It's like whether you're in or out, it can make a big money yep. difference. Yep. It did seem like they were very, but it was very specific areas that they were talking about. Good to get my feet wet. And again, if anyone wants to look at the slides um, or sit in the meeting, there is a, a recording of it. So, okay. Um, agenda item 11 review CONCOM finances. I deposited our check for $25 for a filing fee. So we have a little bit more money in our line item for. Um, Wetlands Protection Act money. And it's not as if we're saving money by not paying a clerk that's going into our budget to be used elsewhere, right? That's just saved money. No, we only have a budget for other things, not salary. At the end of the year, whatever's left goes into the general fund. Yeah. What? We have $700,000 worth of free cash that was certified in the town at the next town. This next special town meeting next week or so, uh, it gets spread around a little bit. The the reason why the reason why we're having someone start on Monday for a substantial about an hourly rate to prepare minutes is I went and said we have unspent money. We have a line item for staff. It's been not utilized since uh, since June or the start of the fiscal year, we are now going to dedicate some of that money to get our to, to reduce our legal liability for not having minutes from our from our public meetings. So that that is one way of where we're, we're now paying attention to our budget and getting it done uh, and, 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 and getting up to date on stuff. Um, the other part of our finances is our training budget. We have a thousand dollars allocated. Bob and I are going to be putting in reimbursements for the class. Leah, are you planning on what? What classes are you planning on I've taking? I've got a couple of them. They're on the um right on the spreadsheet. It was sixty dollars. Sixty-five. So, yeah. Yeah, sixty-five. Are you? Uh, uh, are you interested in taking some more classes? And are you interested in taking some more classes? Yeah. And what? I, why I ask that is because when we do, uh, it's the start of the budget season coming up. After the first of the year, we'll, we should be working to put a budget together to be presented to the selectmen and the finance committee and then to the town in May. Maybe we should think about uh, 
ask and thought education budget train the training, training a little bit yeah because right. like i said i keep i hope there's a lot of people watching this because i want everybody to know we have seven hundred thousand dollars free cash that that you should print out a banner and have it in, like, in, much, in the school at our have? in our meeting eleven hundred thousand yeah yeah which the, is a good thing that's the most i believe the most free cash we've ever had in my yep. tenure well here's helping the school three though Unencumbered. <laughs> so, so what will happen is, at the conclusion of the training, uh, this this fall training cycle, we'll sit down and say we have a thousand dollars and how that gets divided. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is Bob and I are going to the Devons. fort. Well, it's now just Devons. They took the fort part out. Are um, you, are in carpooling? Are you interested in driving? Are you? Uh, I have no the... problem with driving. I am. Um, I like to get there. If that's any indication of what's going to happen. Yes. OK, I'll talk to you after the meeting about who picks up who early Saturday morning and whether we stop for coffee on the way or whatnot. Uh, you do get reimbursed for travel. Uh, that's it is a travel and education budget mm -hmm. and specifically allocated for that. So. Uh, in another couple of weeks, I've let the town uh, treasurer know that I will be reaching out to her to find out how do we get reimbursement for travel and for the training. Oh, yeah, it looks like Deshang is coming back. I'm sorry about I, I I finished all my presentation. I realized nobody was listening. No, we, <laughs> oh, we, was we, we saw that you saw, saw that you end up frozen. OK, so let me let me finish up talking about the finances and training. Uh, assuming we get a clerk, there is another uh, training cycle in the spring. We would want to make sure there's money that we would be able to have uh, a clerk agent take the same training that Bob and I and Leah will be taking in the next couple couple week couple weeks. Okay, so uh, where you cut out is you would sh you would you were sharing the uh, the big. Uh, engineering Francis. site plan and where we would be meeting. We actually met Francis in the upper area uh, and then took a walk over the up Upton border and then in and then he and then we went back south to where they were uh, leveling the, 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 the long uh, drainage swale. So if you wanted to start sharing the screen again and go back okay. and redo I your hope. presentation okay. from there. OK, thank you. I hope we'll, we'll not uh, if I'm going to pay attention to if anything freezed, uh, I, I I would uh, make sure I stop. We'll keep wiggling uh, here. Right, right, okay. Yeah, because I was I made my plan big, so that's why I cannot see uh, the, the you guys behind the the plan. So that's why I didn't realize it when the when the screen dropped. So uh, okay, I was uh, trying to start with. Uh, what the uh, so sometimes maybe you guys can say something. I know you are there, so that's true. <laughs> uh, okay, so I was trying to give in a rough, uh, give in a paintbrush presentation about the site. Uh, so we have a total eight stormwater basins and then series of uh, long swales around the perimeter of the limited project as a drainage swale, which also worked as very well as a sediment erosion control because they are our oh, uh, most downgraded safeguard. You put the seal fence up uh, to some degree, didn't work as as we uh, would expect sometimes due to heavy storms. They will end up in our uh, drainage swale and uh, which go into big ponds. So. The pond number one, that's where you probably and Francis walked uh, around, which is not constructed, unfortunately, at this point. This is the only detention basin in the Upton site. So because they were using, they are doing this part of work at the last. So that's that's probably, we just uh, met with uh, Marianne, the Upton Conservation Administrator, uh, a few months ago, well, a couple of months ago. So to to make sure this section is uh, shored up, so which was added a new erosion control, updated 
uh, sediment erosion control line and the uh, sediment basins on lot 10. And then there's a swale up here, which is not the best uh, swale, roadside swale for the winterization. We would like to probably be recommending that area uh, worked out and uh, adding some grinding check dams so that will work uh, for protecting the spring uh, melting and the spring surge. And the detention basin number two is behind uh, the Lawson Farm Drive uh, lot uh, three, four, and five. It's uh, also a good size pond, so pretty good size pond with a few hundred, four or five hundred feet swale from the road under the road culvert leading to there. The same thing, it worked very well to safeguard as our final. Uh, protection. And then for the upstream is pond three, which is probably the smallest pond. It's just uh, acting uh, like almost like a, a combination of micro pool and the sediment phase four bay. So when the runoff coming from up all this area down through a thousand feet long, actually probably more than thousand feet, uh, probably third, yeah, about thousand feet long, swale it will can settle it uh, so this is the a little bit continuing effort area uh, the swale was excavated but the construction everything was not stabilized so we keep seeing uh, sediment get washing it in and they are doing hopefully the final round of uh, repair and construction and they can be stabilized so if the weather works if they see it like uh, uh, last week, then probably we still have a chance to see some germination. So then part number four is at the very end of Lawson uh, Farm Drive. So you, you are still there, right? Yeah, we, yes. we, okay, we, good, walked, good. we walked We walked where Pond 4 is going in. Yeah, so that's the another pond that has not constructed. So we probably... Uh, we'll try to get them and with the, with the your uh, on board with the new board and active monitoring. Hopefully, we'll give them some motivation to finish it. So it's not impacting as much as construction activities because most of this is almost to the uppermost area. That basin was designed to catch in all the runoff from offside hill coming down and with the sum of our few. Uh, three or four houses in the in the very end of it is a relatively uh, smaller pond, but so that's need to be constructed. Even though the house has not started, that's a purpose. We 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 they cleared it out, but we want to uh, to get them to work on it. So the number five and six is uh, uh, constructed uh, this uh, four or five years ago, and this function is a skinny Mike and. Uh, Peter probably remember that. It's a very long, skinny uh, pond, but it's not that skinny when you are in on the side, look at it. It's still like a probably 20, 30 feet wide, uh, but it's like in 600 feet long, straddle the whole section of it. So the blue lines are the swales from this end of the road, which is very, you can see the swale because it's just a broad pitching uh, toward the sediment basin and then go into the pond and that's the overflow area. It's just a weir. It's a rarely see the overflow. I, I haven't seen myself in person. So that means because of such a long area, any water getting in is recharge the groundwater and then coming out to the wetland. It, it's really worked really well from what I see there. It's the vegetation, everything grow uh, vigorously. Uh, so this is the 42 inch uh, culvert under the road, which is basically conveying off-site runoff and the bypass uh, or uh, stormwater basin. Otherwise, it's uh, like lots of area draining. So they are bypassing. So, and uh, that's an area in the early days had a little washout condition, but that's all, that's like uh, six, seven years ago, if I remember, but could be even longer. So, and then the last uh, detention basin is number seven and eight. So five and six used to be two ponds, but uh, with the change of the layout, so we could 
combine them. And uh, the same thing, pond seven and eight was originally two pond on each side of the road of the old uh, locus, uh, uh, locus uh, uh, road. And uh, with the purchase of Misco Spring, we can so work out making that bigger, longer. And this one is seven and eight was roughly here. And the taking water from lot 72, which is not constructed, and uh, the old Misco Spring factory building so that will all coming down, go through a culvert uh, under the roadway and uh, through a swale to this pond. So which uh, at, at th this part is all with some riprap. So there's lots of water coming to the, it's a big building of that uh, old factory and that with all road runoff sometimes due to construction, some of the curbs was kind of damaged. So once in a while, uh, in, in some days, Lots of road runoff end up to our side and washed out to some. Uh, without this pond and swale, it's going to be very difficult to control. But so far, we haven't really had a, uh, a real problem. So to go even with the road runoff uh, breached into our site, we're still holding very well. But we, we have some stone riprap channels here. It's for that purpose. Uh, so. So that's the overall site, as you see, the, 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 the project site have basins scattered out, and then with uh, at least the 50 of percent of the perimeter of the limit of uh, work is safeguarded by a uh, long swale. So that's worked very well as we originally uh, designed and uh, and a kind of anticipated will work as our final safeguard. And uh, for from this point on, I think our focus definitely with all the houses pretty much in this. Uh, I would say, what uh, five, uh, so probably eighty percent houses all constructed around the road is pretty much all finished and. Uh, and that the, uh, the Locust Hill house is in, and there's some uh, remi some uh, left uh, local, I call the localized minor sediment erosion uh, area need to be finalized, like uh, lot 65 uh, around the edge of the Legion field. So it need to be, it's not a big uh, a concern, but it need to be stabilized before you know the project get get totally signed off, and uh, the the long swale along lot uh, sixty two will be a focal point to make sure that things is stabilized. They are not generating imminent impact to the wetlands because they end up into stormwater basins. But that that's just, it's all a safeguard, but it's not intent to uh, to take in high to a bit of water. So, so that's yeah. what, what we want to do. So we, over we, we saw an excavator working on lot 62, uh, preparing the swale while right. we were there Friday. Right, this is probably the third time. <laughs> you know, it's uh, the, the swale was excavated probably a couple of years ago or even not, uh, earlier when, when they started the work. But I hope this will be the final one because they get the runoff over before all the runoff coming 64, 63, is to just run over the driveway and uh, wash out. So right now they found out to us controlled. We call it sediment erosion control is we cannot eliminate water, but we need to uh, direct the water to where we can control them and uh, uh, or contain them to the way they will not cause erosion. So that's what they were doing that day. I saw some photos in the, in the report, let's see. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what I saw, which is a photo. Yeah, this is this is you can see that's a, that's the driveway side of used to be the runoff. Don't have this outlet. The water will carry with sediment from lot sixty three, just over the whole area, getting washed the slope away. So right now they they add this one in, so the water will no more. They will come into the 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 swale and going into the riprap uh, uh, head uh, pool and then go in. 
So that we hope this can be stabilized because of that, because the only water will come in. It's basically the slope itself, and there's maybe some uh, from the driveway, but it's not like in the whole slope coming down uh, and with all the control. So hopefully this time will will work. Uh, the only concern is with uh, we are approaching to the cold weather. If they uh, hydro seed it, if it can uh, last, but if it's not, that is still going to be a little better off than than the previous few years because again this this uh, controlled uh, channel will control the erosion. Um, so that's so. Yeah, that that's so. This is the pretty much remaining area, uh, Lawson Farm and uh, uh, Drive all the way. So we're looking at uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So probably like a twelve houses. Uh, oh, okay, I think maybe this part also. So maybe maybe fifteen, fifteen to twenty houses remaining to be constructed. So this part is done. The lot number 36, 37, 38, 39 is it's pretty much all uh, uh, state. So just hydro seeded and germinated pretty well. So the good thing is the whole this summer is lots of rain. Any seeded area grows very, very well quickly. But uh, if the area is not seeded, it's still active. It's it's a it's a little challenge, but uh, eighty percent of the the site is is completed. So I think we are in a much better uh, uh, stage to 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 see this through. So so in a way, this low unpaved section, we need to coming up some winterization plan, and the next uh, uh, inspection I will go probably. I may still not be able to go on Friday, as I said, my personal thing. I may move to next Thursday. Uh, so to to go over. So if you want to join me, that that's uh, welcome. But I think again, we will just I will probably give you some more detailed idea of what I would like them to do. I think in this section, we definitely need some uh, grindings, not just that the soil is a barren swale. Uh, left for the winter. That's that's one. And see how they can. Uh, as it sounds like they will be able to finish the two basins, but it's see we get to discuss what is the action or or their construction plan. So if uh, if they are not, uh, so what? So if they they if they see what they can do. So uh, so right now I think uh, with all that I would. Uh, Take uh, maybe questions and uh, and see and recommendations. See how we want to move forward from from this point. Questions? Mr. Shank, just curious. Since part of this is in Upton, you're working with the Upton Concom, or are mm -hmm. they hiring you? Or one one contract is good for the whole enchilada? Yeah, so I'm because even though we have a, a multiple or two order of conditions, but it's still one project. So we are hired not by you or by the uh, by the Upton Conservation. I'm hired by the developer. I so so, so therefore that they uh, uh, we are going there. Uh, we designed the project. The drainage. So with the Fred, I I basically designed the whole thing. So I, it's, uh, the whole the things is in my mind, in my head for twenty years <laughs> haven't gone far. And uh, uh, so it's, it's good to see. You know, the site used to be water running all over the place in the springtime. So so it's a it's a much better than we started with. So and and as I said, the overall drainage was designed with this. Uh, long swale around the limit of work at uh, uh, downgrading site. It helped a lot. So from from the erosion control perspective. Um, so yeah. So the, no, we we already met with Marianne, the conservation agent uh, from Upton, 
and uh, communicate a couple of times to refresh the uh, the erosion control leading to pond one. So I will I will follow up with the uh, uh, applicant to see what's their plan. I know they were seeking some contractors to do the construction to finalize pond one and the four. So they did some work, but it hasn't the doing haven't finished the construction or even started uh, the earthwork. So that's that's maybe the co with the new commission uh, in you know in in the in function. If you get uh, maybe a secretary or agent. We may help to to work in together. So I'm just one leg. I recommend I don't have that much power to enforce anything. So, <laughs> right. So we need to work in side by side. To I, I'm I think it's good for them. I'm not. I mean, I work for them. I think it is the best thing. Why not finish it, right? So you have to do it. It's a, yes, I think you're the best person to uh, review the work. So thank you for doing it. I yeah. Agree with well, thank you. I, I I'm happy to to see this project through. As I said, you know, as a life, you don't have that many twenty years. So I started work on this project side to 2004. It's almost twenty years, and <laughs> so we we all see our changes, right? So Peter and Mike. You know. Here's here's uh, my next question. Pond yeah. one in Upton. Will stormwater from the lots in Menden be flowing into Pond One? Uh, that's a good question. I think it is. Uh, uh, yes, some of the. Uh, so let me see. Coming. There's. Uh, so if you look into Pond Four, there's definitely stormwater. The the road section from Menden side uh, up to probably lot per sixteen. From this section down, all goes to pond one, and uh, so the remaining goes to pond four. Yes. Any other questions? Okay, you said that you're planning on going out next Thursday. Is there benefit in having CONCOM come and participate with you on that, or would you think that it would be better to wait another couple of weeks for you and the the contractor to uh, work out some of the other issues before we go out again. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, so. I think so. Oh, the right. the way when I go there, I'm, if I work with you, we see things. I will have uh, probably give you a very comfortable, uh, solid way they what they can do, not just point out problems. I want so, and then maybe you. You can follow up. So the, the one you send out, the summary card, that will be a great help for me. I say, look, I, we have to get this thing done <laughs> to give me a little bit uh, uh, a pushing power too. So because yeah. we 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 are we can only recommend. We don't have the power to to enforce, as I just said. So it will it will help to get things moving. I I think. Okay, but, so 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 on on Thursday, would a representative from the contractor be going on the walk with us? Uh, so usually he is there, Dave uh, Fitchner, but they happened to be so he was on vacation <laughs> last week, I heard. So he was not there. I will. Why not? I follow up on this. So I'm going to check with him, see if the next Thursday he's around. And so I will uh, send out uh, a kind of uh, like a coordination uh, email so that so you it, it will be good. So if you show up, he show up and he understands a little bit from the commission's perspective. And uh, yeah, OK, uh, so I'll wait for your email and then send out uh, a text message if we are able to schedule something this Thursday. Otherwise, it would be two weeks after that. Uh, yeah, it will be two weeks after next uh, Thursday. Right. So okay. No, that'll be around Veterans Day. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's a uh, next Thursday would be like uh, what eleventh or something. Uh, let's check it out. Uh, if it's, but I will I will uh, I will come in 
definitely send you an email if it's not this Friday after I get hold of, uh, I'm not just get hold of him, I want him to see if he can do something before our meeting. So it, it's, they, they have to do it, you know, it's not something, it, it's just uh, so that you can wade through, you know, so. Yep. I, I know yeah. you probably all know, it. it's very tight labor market, so it's, a, it's a not easy to get even uh, the contractors, I know they did they have two or three contracts, they do part of it, they have to jump in on another job and they have to get another one. So uh, I have seen many changes on the side, but overall, as I said, the overall subdivision looks uh, looks well built, uh, where the finished part. Okay, Leah had another question. Hi, sure. Desheng. Hi. This is this is Leah Whiting. I'm a new member here, so nice to Hi, meet Leah. you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> In our site walk, we, we noticed a, a bunch of different colored flags. Um, sometimes they were uh, two different flags on one pole. Um, sometimes we had different colored flags. I think that we had the orange flags and there were blue striped flags. Can you just explain what they are? Because it was hard to figure out where the markings for the wetlands and where the property lines were. Yes, uh, so usually uh, all our original wetland flag is a blue flag. But we haven't uh, really, uh, since the construction, I, I know the surveyor is supposed to, uh, the, the, the area is all completed. You probably don't see much of the original flag snap. So there's after, uh, during the construction, sometimes some places they need to know, usually flats office will go, uh, the Shea, you know, engineer will go there they put up some flags just to based on the survey of original wetlands location. They probably put some like a stripe and uh, uh, red and black. So, and then the the pink flags is usually to demarcate some uh, construction lines like uh, erosion control line, a limit of work, or uh, so uh, footing uh, of the driveway. So that's usually the surveyors use. So pink. Uh, and, or either pink or, or orange. So normally uh, I use uh, solid light blue flags for, for wetlands. Right. All right, yeah. so if we have both you and someone from the contracting company on Thursday, we'd be able to say that's what, what each of the flags are supposed to be for. Right, yes, yes, that, that, that will. So some of them I can probably uh, if I'm there, I probably can kind of get rough idea. So, but uh, that's usually I see there is uh, reinstated flags by surveyor. They they use a little bit different color than mine. So, anything else? Okay, thank you for uh, joining our meeting tonight and giving us an overview for me and the other new members. Uh, and we'll look forward to meeting you either next Thursday or in a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, nice to see you all. And, and uh, so have have a nice weekend if I don't talk to yep. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye now. This, this is the issue tracker that he was talking about. This is a... Uh, my working in uh, financial regulation and auditing for a decade and give me two reports and I will track the differences between them. So the, the this is now available for I, the um, the contacting uh, the contractors and uh, this will make them aware of the kind of things that we would be concerned with tracking. So in, in terms of ac action, DeShang is saying he is paid by the contractor and the contractor can blow him off. Whereas now that we are paying attention to them, we would be able to go out and say whether we feel that something uh, is a little more urgent or should get taken care of. So that's why I'm hoping that we will be able to continue to have a good relationship with the contracting company and with, uh, with DeShang. I still feel like the flags are a little wonky, though, because and, and we'll find out what they are next week and we'll be able to say where the wetlands is, because I did find it confusing. 
until we know where the, the, the BVD is, we don't know what we're, we're, well, the we're other we have thing jurisdiction is some over. Of, some of those poles had two flags on them. Mm -hmm. How could it be a wetland if there was a wetland flag? Wetland or not, the wetland flag. Flag. flags are not usually put on poles. Well, wetland flags are to a, tied to a, a branch or a stick. Uh, exactly, yeah. But there were some places where there were more than one flag. So a lot of places they use the uh, um, uh, a striped <laughs> flag with another flag. So it was red and white striped with another flag, whether it be orange or, or well, the other. This is a combination of two projects, right? So I don't know how many because there was one project done, and then there was another. And the other site has is you're in two towns. Yep. Like Kyle said, you're going from Menden Water and you're putting in an Upton. We it, want that water back. <laughs> It's a big site and it's a tough site. It's steep. Only when it's open, Misco Springs. You re really? There's ledge? Oh, I hear the blasting. No, I'm just kidding. By yeah. the, way. The, the blasting is going on. You know, they, they start up at 7 a.m. as soon sure as they, they can. Do. Get out there early. All right, we're 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 coming down to the end. So okay. the, the last did we, two. Did we finish talking about the Minutian thing? Yeah, well, we is someone want to volunteer to go and drop this off at his, at, at his place? Um, Anyone work with him before? Be today, tomorrow, or tomorrow. Okay. Well, otherwise, we'll I'll just I'm bring back, them with I, us. I can, I'll, I'll reach out to Mark and, and say, hey, okay, you know, we got we got a report for you to look at. You can just trust. throw it in his mailbox. It's well, yeah, that's what you want. Well, you're not allowed to do that. You can't even get it. <laughs> well, then you gotta, he, yeah, he, he, he was he was it. very very upfront about he doesn't he's not he doesn't have an email account. He doesn't do social media he doesn't have uh texting on his phone or anything and again I'm, yep. if i'm gonna go on sunday i just need people to go with me oh we will be there okay. yeah. yeah although i'm gonna have to leave by 10 so you gotta go to choice yeah that's right so but yep nine five all right um back to the correspondent in his driveway do we just park on the street or do we what's the deal with that uh either on the street or you can come on his driveway at the beginning of the driveway on the okay. side it's probably uh we had email from david bates five morrison drive about his order of conditions and brush clearing he is planning on clearing brush at the very front of the of his property which is not clear not uh next to where the wetlands are in a protected buffer zone i I, I, this is where I was talking. I sent him our usual recommendations of um, don't yank the roots out. You can grind if you want. Uh, no heavy machinery that isn't on something that's already paved. And uh, and said that uh, he was not going to be doing anything uh, along those lines. Uh, well, he's asking to brush cut in the buffer, basically, right? So can yeah. we say well, he, not within 25 feet of the wetland? What is our rule of thumb? <laughs> he, he, he's not, he's going to be brush clearing on another part of his property. And so he wanted to make sure how that fit in. So that's, that was the response that I gave him. Um, we got our annual license renewal routing slips for alcohol and other things that I basically said or the concom, we don't care that much. <laughs> and she said, great, you're all set. It's not totally emptied in the fall. Nope. Um, uh, items not reasonably anticipated. Uh, our next meeting is on Thursday, November 9th. That is Veterans Day. Menden is now declaring that a town holiday and the town employees will not be working. I reached out and confirmed we will be able to meet in the building at our regular second Thursday of the month. Uh, whether we have a staff because they're taking the day off, I don't know. We'll see if we have a staff person or not. Uh, the second, uh, so the fourth Thursday in November is Thanksgiving. So what I will propose is we will see how much activity we have when we meet on 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 Veterans Day and decide whether we need to meet uh, the week the Thursday after Thanksgiving or not. So we can pump that uh, off. There were three building permits that came in. Uh, two of them were not jurisdictional because they do not have wetlands. One of them is for uh, a commercial uh, permit, COM-2020-0001. Uh, 
23 12 at 149 Oxford Road. Uh, the request is to install a fence between Royal Fireside and Lou's Lawnmower. Who requested Royal Fireside or Lou's? Uh, whoever owns 149. So whoever owns that's Royal here. Fireside, right? With all yeah. those. Looks yeah, like I it. believe so. Yeah. Uh, I put this on hold but because. the property line is pretty tight on the other side. <laughs> yeah. on, on the other side of Route 16 is uh, Rock Meadow Brook. If they are doing work around here, it may be jurisdictional. It may not. I'm waiting for them to notice that I put it on hold and get back to us with more information. Because this is not what we don't know. That's just no, trees. But the way I the way I work is I go to Mass GIS. Yeah. I take it's very careful. Yeah. Oh look, close. Yes. You're, you're, you're just coming right up to the property line, even though it's on the other side of Route 16. You're still in a in a in a border. In a, in a protected area. Some kind of swell in front of that property too. Uh, I know there isn't going to lose. And and this is where I, I basically I get over. this is this is now our way of getting the attention of people who want to do things. The building permits on hold. They can't do anything until they get back, and I release the hold. And and this is also what will be happening in Sylvan Springs. Uh, at some point, Fred Shea. Uh, uh, Fred Latham from Shea Engineering will come in with a notice of intent saying, yeah, we want to do more work and their building permit's going to be on hold if I'm looking at the locus and I say, you know, we are uncomfortable with allowing you to do further work until you remediate the items that we have expressed serious concern about. Good okay, man, Carl. <laughs> All right, uh, that concludes all of my issues and, and discussions, any other further conversation people want to bring up? Uh, Bob, do you want to say anything about the training you're getting? The training is is very helpful. Um, with, we're learning about the proper way to execute NOIs and the reasons for them. We're learning about uh, floodplains. We're learning about um, the different uh, wetland applications. It's really worth taking the classes. Uh, there's a lot of things I'm learning that we should be doing site visits, like on the big sites, like uh, 49, 45, 49. We should be having bi-monthly um, visits to that site to make sure that the silt fences are in, can, in place, that they're not ruined or damaged, that the retention ponds are working correctly, that their logs are up to date uh, and anything that we see um, make notes, mentions. And the one thing that is stressed time and time and time and time again is documentation. Take pictures, take notes, make people aware of what you see when you're there. Exactly like what Deshang does, you know, that we could be doing, maybe not that intentionally, but you're suggesting you're right on. But I don't think, have have any of you guys even been up there since they started working? I can buy there every day. But do you <laughs> stop and see it? Pretty obvious what they're doing. I can see. I'm in the business. I could look at something and go on. That's even more of a reason for you to stop and look, though, because you'll know more than we do. That's why I go like that and look when I go by. If I see something that's out of the ordinary, I would stop. It's a big sight, though. It goes back pretty far. Yes. Why don't you take a walk up there? 60 feet up, 40 <laughs> miles an hour. One, one of the classes I took was on enforcement, a couple of them, and, and also on the CRs. So when we get a clerk, I will think about, uh, one of the things I found eye-opening is there are some types of actions that if a resident brings to our attention, the clerk can just send out a letter saying, we think that you're doing you're up to some something hinky. Without and, and then it and then it they bring the agent brings it to the committee's attention at the next meeting and then we approve their action or we say, no, we disagree with it. Uh, and that starts the whole process uh, and, and also. When someone sends a report, you you document it and you take photographs and they laid out all of the various steps, things that the agent does, things that the commission does, 
things that the commission starts bringing town council into and how to prepare documentation and evidence so that in case the person we cite does an appeal from either their civil writing, we write them a ticket for, you know, not 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 taking a fill out of a out of a wetlands. If they appeal, the town council has sufficient documentary evidence and they're comfortable with with the work that we have done. Uh, my expectation is that when 15 Cape Road starts working, we will be working on, we will, sorry, 23 Cape Road. We will have the ability to go out on a more regular basis because there has been a heightened interest with the abutters and they'll want to know that we're keeping an eye on them. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, uh, when Kevin Meehan's project on Route 16, where when he comes back to us in the planning board, if there's any wetlands impact, we could also go out and, and spend time looking at that on a regular basis. Hmm. But at the moment, uh, well, if I so, could have revisited, we could have should have done that with Cape Road while it was while we're having issues because we're having multiple sites. That to me would have been an appropriate site to bring in someone like the Shang who can tell us where the water's coming from. Yep. And even though the proponent didn't really want it, that's you know, you asked him. But yes. Well, I when 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 work begins on the property, they are supposed to notify us to their siltation and other stuff before they begin work. At that point, we can talk to them about stormwater management and uh, begin working with planning board, board of health, board of selectmen on runoff and other the hydrological conditions for that entire air part of town. Are they already working on that site? They put all the retention ponds in and everything. That was done by the current owner to repair the to repair plant. the existing stuff, and and that is now been taken care of. When I last spoke with Colin from um, Blue Water, they said that they're expecting the sale to take place in the next couple of months, and then they would come back and begin construction next year. And at that time, that's when we can talk about you know okay. We want to go and make sure that your construction activities do not adversely impact the the um, uh, the siltation fence and and that the retention ponds are getting filled cleaned out that the riprap is working properly. Is there any way we can? I mean, this is long term, but the 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 siltation fences and the you know the hay rolls with the with that. Right, the waddles. Yeah, yeah. There are two parts to this. At some point after all work has been completed, they will come back to us and ask for a certificate of compliance that closes out the order of conditions that we we gave them last year. We don't sign off on the order of condition uh, on the COC until all of that has been done. Hydro seeding is in place, things like that. In addition, Part of the planning board approval of that project is the maintenance and operation plan, which is about yay thick. And in that maintenance and operation plan is all of the language that the CONCOM wanted about going in after a major storm event. And the town has the right to go in and look and make sure that their stormwater mitigation worked properly. Uh, the plan s says when they will go in and clean the uh, below ground filters and things like that. My, but my question was, can is there any way we can mandate and at some point in the future for them to use biodegradable materials when it comes to those? Um, I call, I think they're just, you know, the silt. They keep the silt. Straw water is not biodegradable. It, they have it, the option of a biodegradable. It was the netting. The, it was, the yes. The netting exactly. that wasn't. Yeah. Right. And, so and it's two different kinds. Right. And and when Blue Water st starts uh, working on the project again, we can I can put you in contact with Colin and you can speak with him about that. And what is the um the bio? So the we saw the kind of the plastic netting, but what do they use to make it biodegradable? The hay is fine, but what is? They could just use string. Okay, like a cotton twine or something like that. I think we could do a better job of asking people to remove their erosion control once it's done because silt fence doesn't disappear. 
No. Uh, that needs that's needs to get now. And your stuff, you know, they, they nope. could. Once the grass is in, hopefully you could pull out the whatever is there. The but one it. greatest takeaway that I took from these meetings is that what we do here is good, but what they're suggesting <laughs> is we, when an when a applicant comes to us, they need to give us their information two weeks before so that the board can look at it, discuss it, come up with questions, and then answer, have those questions answered by this surveyor or engineer or whoever at the meeting, not have them come to a meeting with their plan, us look at it for the first time and say, does anybody get any questions? Well, here, here's the difference. Most towns don't continue for months. And <laughs> Most other towns only, don't continue hearings. The, the public meeting doesn't open until all of those questions have been answered. Then you open it. Then we have the two weeks. In order to close. Yeah, one of the other interesting things that I learned is a continuance requires assent from both the applicant and the concom. If we ask them to continue and they say no, okay, then we'll have to make a decision now. A decision on we got <laughs> and we'll probably say no. <laughs> yep. But your point, is, Bob, is that we shouldn't schedule the hearing. Boom, boom, boom. Right. That get have have a meeting where we look at the plan, digest a plan, and then schedule the. Yes, hearing for the follow up. There, there is a timeline from when they drop off the paperwork and a check, and the clerk like agent would be responsible for monitoring that. One, one Fourteen of the, days, I believe. Yes. So, how do we make that work then? Go get it. Because yeah. until you open the meeting, it's not a, it's not a public meeting. That you have fourteen days from when you open it. Okay. Doesn't mean you have to open it the day they drop it off. Okay. No, so they can drop the it off. You have to, and then we can look at it through the next meeting and then schedule the next meeting for the public meeting. It's it's a little more complicated than that. The clock starts when they drop off the paperwork. We have a set number of weeks to respond. And yeah. part of our response is scheduling the public hearing. So and the reason for that is precisely it could fall through the cracks. Right, you can hold somebody up for years. And that happened for 1517. And in fact, we, we didn't have a clerk and they ended up throwing up their hands and going to DEPs and DEP took it over. Right. So there's, there's protection for both sides of the coin. Yep. I'll All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn unless you. Is there a second? Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor. Uh, well, the only vote for the night. And it was Scott, it was unanimous. Thank you for coming and I'm going to stop the recording. Have a great night. Thank you, Jason. You too. Thanks for being there, Jason. Absolutely. So I'll put a phone call into him tomorrow. What I get from it. We'll see. Well, you can do. Good night.